good morning. morning. Oh, there's a lot of chatter. People already gathered by the Christmas tree. Oh, my goodness. It's not even Thanksgiving. Here we are. Good morning to Suncoast Metropolitan Community Church, where we teach and practice truth, trust, and transformation. So now let's give a great big warm welcome to those online who are worshiping with us this morning. God bless you, and we invite you to sign in on the chat and let us know how many people are worshiping with you, where you're worshiping from, and uh, if you have any special prayer requests, we would love to know about that. So this is a very special weekend. It's Veterans Weekend, so if you are a veteran of one of the branches of the armed services, Will you please rise as you're able? I know we have Rudy and others. Come on. Now stay standing. All right. Stay standing. Now come on. Veterans, stay standing. And let's uh, let's say a prayer for our veterans, uh, those in our families, those in our church family here today. God, we bless you and we thank you for those who have given uh, in service to our country. We thank you, God, whether service was long ago or more recently. Uh, God, we thank you for members of our family and friends who have served and for all those serving today. And we ask God for peace in our time. We ask God uh, for peace in our world. And we thank you for those who have served so wonderfully and uh, who have contributed to our country's well-being. In Jesus' name and in your many names we pray, amen. Amen. And now Linda will come and share our announcements. Morning, family. Before I read the announcements, I'd like to thank everyone who came yesterday to help beautify the property for Pride. We had an awesome team and I'd like to thank all of you for coming. Today is Pillar Sunday. We hope you will consider giving an additional gift to support our mortgage fund. You can use the yellow envelopes in the back of the chairs or via push pay. Bart will now come and share news about how you can support two families during the Christmas season. Good morning. It is early for Christmas shopping, but we did put an angel tree up this morning. And on the angel tree, you'll find 50 plus angels. And on the back of every angel is the gender and age of a child and a gift that that child would like to get this Christmas. So if you would be kind enough to look at the tree and if you'd like to take an angel, there's a sign up sheet. Please tell us your name, what angel number you took. There's a number on the top of the angel that correlates to that child. And contact information for you in case you take it and you don't come through so we can come looking for you. But (laughs) if you could be kind enough, um, there's everything on the angels from trucks and cars to clothing and basketballs and pink Crocs for a boy and trucks for a girl. It's it's as modern as you can make it um, for this Christmas and we'd really appreciate it. It's for five children from Cranberry Elementary and five children from Glen Allen Elementary. And we've been partnering with them for a good couple of years and have done this before. This is the first year Carlos and I have been knee deep in it. So help us make it a great Christmas this year, please. The Congregational Forum is today immediately after worship. The annual Congregational Meeting the next Sunday on November 19th. The board has been working very hard this year and has accomplished so much. They want information to share and excited to to present plans for the upcoming year. The final social justice book club meeting set for November 27th has been canceled due to a scheduling conflict. Thank you to everyone who participated throughout the year. Venice Pride needs volunteers on Saturday, November 18th Please use the form in the lobby to sign up for another time and see Jay if you have any questions. On Wednesday, November 21st at 1030, join Reverend Nancy for a special time of expressing and feeling gratitude as we walk the labyrinth next door at the Unity Church Gardens. We will meet at Sun Coast first, walk across the street together for a time of prayer and sharing as we get ready for Thanksgiving. 
On Tuesday, November 28th, join Alan and myself as we decorate the church for the holidays. They will begin at 9 a.m. Now, Reverend Nancy will come and celebrate our November birthdays and anniversaries. All right. Birthdays. All right. We got some right here in this room. All right. And uh, so let's, and anniversaries, yes. Come on, Park. And I know we have more. I know it wasn't Park. Didn't we have also Park and George? Your anniversary? Okay. So we're going to sing happy birthday and happy anniversary all in different ways. So let's sing together. <clears throat> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, happy birthday to you. Amen. All right. God bless you today. Thank you. Get my steps in this morning. Check out the website for the weekly Staying Connected for additional information on ways to stay involved. Now let's make a minute to greet each other safely. Please rise. And on the count of three, we'll open your arms wide and extend a warm welcome to all joining us in person and online. One, two, three. Yay. Thank you. You may be seated. Please join me in our opening prayer. Through the week of stress and demands, we come to you this day, O oh God. Awaken us again to your comforting and loving presence in our lives. Help us to be open to the many ways in which you have called us and sustained us. Visit us through your presence this morning as we worship you. Rise as you're able and join us in our opening song this morning, O oh, for a World, very familiar tune. This morning's first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Our God is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint nor grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God's word for us, God's people. Amen.
Please rise as you're able for the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the realm of heaven will be like this. Ten young women took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those young women got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other young women came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. God's word for God's people. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning. And uh, so uh, we're so grateful to have Margaret and Alan and Clark here helping us this morning. And uh, so just sing out like you know it. That's what we're going to do. So, all right. Now, for a group that doesn't know that song, I thought that we did pretty well, actually. <laughs> Almost. All right, I'm having an issue here. Hold on one second. Well, we'll leave it like that. So, uh, the Venice Pride had their announcement about needing helper helpers. Suncoast MCC needs help at Venice Pride. And so uh, I've talked to several of you already. You've indicated that you would help with our church uh, table. 
And so if you are still willing to do that, we're going to have a brief three-minute touch base after the forum today. We're gonna, because we're going to go right into the forum, right? Yeah, pretty close. So we'll just kind of hang out and watch me and find me, and we'll either do it right before the forum or right after the forum, okay? All right. Would you join me in prayer? Loving, gracious God, I ask, that may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as you heard read today, our scripture lesson is about a wedding. As a pastor, I've performed more weddings than I can count, quite truthfully. I've performed weddings for heterosexual couples. I've performed holy unions for same-sex couples when marriage wasn't legal. And since legalization, I've performed many same-sex marriages. I'm sure Reverend Nancy can say the same. Most of the time, a lot of energy is invested in weddings. For some weddings, a lot of money is invested, and if not always a lot of money, most wedding ceremonies have a lot of invested time, energy, creativity, love, and hope. We've seen those shows about, uh, what is it, Bridezilla, and uh, I think I've even heard the the term Groomzilla, you know, where where the groom just totally goes off, goes off the charts and so forth. I, I've been in a few wedding environments where that energy's been kind of like that, you know? And you can kind of see how, how that can happen. Weddings usually are full of emotion. Uh, the one thing about a wedding, for me personally, performing a wedding is, you know, usually they videotape it and all that. I'm always thinking, oh, please, don't let me mess up you know, significantly, because it's going to be on record, and it'll be for every time they watch their wedding, if they do, I don't know, I don't think, I don't think Michael and I have ever watched anything from our wedding, but we were there, why watch it again, I don't know, but uh, uh, anyway, nerves can tend to run high, there can be lots of moving parts and individuals involved, which creates the potential for something to go wrong, even something disastrous to happen. Oftentimes, people are stretched thin, and just one small little glitch can throw everything into mayhem. I remember many years ago in my former uh, denomination where I was pastoring, I did a a wedding for a young heterosexual couple, and it was very traditional. You know, she had on the white gown and veil and so forth, and they did a unity candle, which probably most are familiar with, you know, where there's the two smaller tap- tapers that are lit and then the one larger pillar candle that is, that is uh, lit by using the two smaller ones to signify, you know, uh, the two individual lives coming together. So all of that went just fine until the bride decided, you know, that it was time for her to extinguish her taper, at which time she blew her taper out and blew her veil into the taper that had not gone out yet. Thus, she caught fire. And so her now husband and me are standing there, you know, (laughs) swatting her in the face, trying to extinguish her veil, which we did. We, We got the fire put out. And then it was one of those things where the three of us, you know, We were right there, and so uh, it it began to be humorous for us. And so it was a little bit of a challenge to finish up that ceremony, quite truthfully, because all three of us just wanted to laugh the rest of the way through. In our scripture story, Jesus uh, is approaching the end of his life, and he uses a wedding, an event loaded with emotion, to illustrate the realm of God. It's important to understand something about the weddings uh, and their customs in Jesus' day. They could be emotionally charged, just like our modern-day weddings. What's different is that guests gathered at the home of the bride, where her parents entertained the guests as they waited for the groom to arrive. And when the groom was approaching, it was custom for the guests, along with the bridesmaids, to light torches as they went out to greet him. Then the entire wedding party and guests would walk to the groom's house to join his parents 
for the ceremony. The ceremony was generally followed by an extended party that could last for a number of days. But for some reason, we're not told why, but the groom in our passage is late. A significant amount of time passes and people are nodding off. Eventually, the groom shows up around midnight. The bridesmaids jump to their feet, trim their lamps, and out they go to greet the groom. However, five of the ten bridesmaids have kept their lamps burning while they waited, and they've run out of oil with nothing in reserves. Since the other wiser bridesmaids won't loan them any oil, off to the the five go to find some oil. And when they return, they're locked out of the wedding. Jesus warns his listeners that they are to keep awake because they do not know the day or the hour. Now, I've heard a lot of sermons using this story to predict a second coming of Christ. You do not know the day or the hour. And many books have been written on this topic as well. Many believe there will be a second coming of Christ with a whole lot of fanfare, death, etc. This sermon is not one of those sermons. (laughs) Because whether or not one believes in a literal second coming of Christ, I believe there's really a deeper meaning to this story that we can apply to our lives today. You see, for me... A main theme of this story is to symbolically stay awake, to be alert, to wait with purpose, to be prepared, to live lives of expectancy. Obviously, Jesus didn't return during the lifetime of the early Christians who were listening to him tell this parable. So that leads me to believe that this story was told by Jesus who knew he wouldn't return during the lifetime of his listeners, with a greater meaning that applies to all followers of Christ, both then and for us today. Some may say he told it for people who would later hear the story, but for me, that's kind of a stretch too. For me, I believe Jesus and his practice of inclusion didn't want to exclude his present listeners from a meaning of the story that they would be able to apply to their lives along with all who would hear it in the future. You see, part of the mission of all who either identify as Christian or who attempt to model their life and conduct following the example of Jesus is to live with faith, with hope, with courage, and to live expecting God to move in our lives as we wait for whatever it is to come, to expect God to show up in whatever way we need God without knowing what's going to happen in the future. But it's a trust and it's a wait and it's an expectancy that God will be there through it all. There are parts of me that wishes I knew what was going to happen in the future. Sometimes it just seems like it'd be easier, doesn't it? And yet I think the way God has all of life designed is pretty incredible because I think that I probably couldn't handle what's going to happen. And so God just piecemeals it to me, minute by minute, day by day. And yet the assurance that I have is that as I wait, as I watch, I know that God is faithful to be with me in it all. One thing is certain, there is more to come than our present reality. We are encouraged to live ready. You see, our faith should compel us to live into our purpose, our mission as a church and as individuals. Part of that mission and purpose in life is to live with hope and a confident expectation that there is more. There is grace, there is life, there is healing, there is goodness, there is blessing. And not just to live expecting more of that grace, life, healing, goodness, and blessing to come, but to be facilitators of that grace, that life, that healing, 
that goodness and blessing. The point is living expectantly and hopefully. Our hope and trust is that the same God who created the world will continue to love the world and continue to create the world in the way it is intended to be. When we look at life in this way, we acknowledge that it's not only God who creates the world in the way it's intended to be, but we are co-creators with God. We partner with God in this creation. We are the facilitators of a better world with God. Our world is fractured. Our country is divided. Parts of the world are ravaged by war. None of us can know specifically what the future will hold. Yet, when we live in hope, we are not turning away from the harsh realities of today. Rather, living in hope spurs us on with a confident expectation that blessing, goodness, healing, and positive change are just around the corner. We can help see that change become reality. In the world today, perhaps you're like me because sometimes I need reminded that the love of God will continue to show up, sometimes in unexpected ways. And when it does, our hope, our faith is lifted and we move forward with confidence that we are not doing this alone. We are called to live in hope, to watch and to wait, to expect good to come, to expect God to show up and to be with us. But not only expect it, know that it will come because we're going to do our part to show love and compassion and to work for justice and peace. It doesn't just happen. We are the co-creators with God, creating the world in the way God intends the world to be. Heaven comes to earth. Christ's presence is made known when we give of ourselves to the work of creating a better world, a more loving world, a more compassionate world a more peaceful world. The groom is coming and has come to earth and will continue to come to earth through you and through me. We watch and wait and witness the presence of Christ and the actions of others. But let us not only watch and wait with hope and expectancy, But let us be facilitators of Christ's presence here and now. Let us be co-creators with God and help create a world of love, of light, of peace, of joy, of equality, of fairness, of hope for us all. Amen.
please join me in prayer. God, we come to you this morning, trusting your presence is within us, knowing that you hear us each time we call upon you. Help us remember that we are co-creators with you and that we are called to be facilitators of your love, your grace, your joy, and your peace within our world. We pray today for peace, especially in Israel, in Gaza, in the Middle East. We pray for those who are most vulnerable, the children who are caught in the crossfires. We pray for healing from war and from violence. Jesus, we are called to be your presence in the world. Help us demonstrate you in all we do. Holy Spirit, continue to fill us with your power so that we may continue the work of ministry you've called us to do. God, you've promised never to leave us nor forsake us. Help us trust you in all things. Finally, in these moments, we turn to persons and situations that are on our hearts. Let us begin to speak those needs aloud now. We know you have heard these prayers this morning. We lift up those whom we have named, those who have been listed in our online chat, those on our prayer list, and those we have yet to speak. And now we rise as we are able and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us saying, Our Creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. be seated. So you, you saw earlier, I got so enthusiastic during keep your, you know, uh, uh, lamps trimmed and burning and uh, that I caught my foot on a choir chair.
Please rise as you're able. <clears throat> For the harvest of the Spirit, thanks be to God. bless you and we love you for all the gifts given in this place and in the world for your purpose in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. At LMCCs around the world, we welcome everyone to the communion table, regardless of where you are on your journey. Right now, your journey has brought you to Suncoast. Mm. If you are watching online, I invite you to gather your bread and juice as we prepare for communion. For those of us who are gathered here, I invite you to retrieve the communion packet. If you did not receive a packet, please raise your hand for an usher. Good. All right. The Holy One be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to our God. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Let us pray. God, you have called us to be co creators with you in our community and the world. Help us remember that. Without, with you as our foundation, we can handle anything that comes our way. With you as our focus, all things pale in comparison. We thank you that you have provided for all human need through the love that is represented here at this table. May we receive that which we need today as we partake from this table so that we can continue to make a difference in this community. We offer this sacrament in honor of those who have not been able to find their way here yet. Those who struggle and question, who look for a community that tries to live up to your values. May their path to you, to community, be filled with hope. Holy Spirit, hover over us and over this place this morning. Unite us in holy communion, which we receive with gratitude and with wonder. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it and gave thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. As you eat of it, remember me. Likewise, he took the cup after supper. He gave thanks and gave it to his friends, saying, drink of this all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant will be shed for you and for all people so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Almighty God, we bless the bread and the cup that they may be reminders of your love for us and may strengthen us along our spiritual journey. Amen. Amen. Friends in Christ, this meal is God's gift for us, God's people. In just a moment, we will receive communion with the individual packets as we have been given. After receiving the gifts, if you wish to come forward for a blessing, we invite you to do so. And now, whether participating from home or here in person, please consume the bread and juice. And after consuming, for those who would like to come forward, please move to the front of the sanctuary for a blessing. The body of Christ amen. for us. Amen. The blood of Christ, amen. Mm -hmm. 
pray. Thank you, God, for feeding us from your table of love and grace. Thank you for empowering us to be co-creators of your presence here on the earth. Use us and use our church to make a difference in your many names. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our closing song, This Little Light of Mine. <laughs>
It's all good. <laughs> and now may you go from this place being filled with God's presence, being co-creators of God's goodness in the earth. Amen. Amen.